Playing time. It is the fifth morning. Ooh. Hey, the weight loss has started. Yeah, playing time. Uh, not bad feeling about this one. Uh, I got away with it. Right. Live and direct, bringing you the straight truth. Okay, so the straight truth is that I broke my diet last night. And um, that's all this is, man. Got to tell you the truth. So uh, I was on day... Wait, I just weighed myself day six. So I was on the evening of day five. And uh, I just got a Jones in. Got a Jones in, went out and got frozen yogurt. Um, and I tried to keep the toppings down a little bit. And, you know, I knew I was already breaking my diet. And that kicked off. An hour, two hours later, I'm like, I want milk and cookies. So I went and got milk and cookies. So, and the milk actually isn't too bad on this diet. Um, although I'm pretty sure they add sugar to it. So, but it's not the worst thing. But the cookies obviously are way off. So I broke my diet and I gained weight this morning. I only gained a pound, which makes me think I didn't eat that much. So I, I think I kind of got away with it. Or uh, if my weight loss was due to ketosis, which I'm pretty sure it was, then that uh, I'm going to be paying that for a few days. We'll see tomorrow. Um, but, you know, this I, I can't lie on this web series. i got to tell you, web series, <laughs> uh, on this blog. i got to tell you what I'm going through and what I'm doing so that hopefully other people see it and know that, yeah, it's a struggle. Food addiction is, is real, man. If alcohol addiction is a disease, that, which I don't think it is, by the way, I think it's a disorder. I don't think they should use the word disease. It's a disorder. It's a mental disorder. It's or it's the chemicals in the brain or something within you makes you an alcoholic. Uh, I think the same is true of food, man. So anyway, it's real. I'm a food addict. I make mistakes. But I'm back on it today. I just had a carnival breakfast. I'm going to try and stick with it. Try and make it happen, Captain. Back on the horse. All right. I thought I'd do a check-in. Um, I have a list uh, on my desktop, on my sticky note, on my computer, that is what is wrong with me checklist. And I did this for the potato diet. Before I started the potato diet, I made a list of the things that I wanted to fix. I would hope get better with my diet. And then uh, after about five or six days, I think I went through the list to see how it is. Well, this is day seven of the carnivore diet. And I thought I'd check in again, see how we're doing. Um, okay, so the first thing I was tracking is my weight. Um, I started the potato diet at 293 point something, point four, I think, pounds. Um, and I lost 10 pounds on that. So then I gained a little bit of weight because I had a bad couple of days. And uh, I'm back on the diet. I need to shave. It's getting ridiculous. That should be one of my issues. I haven't shaved for years to hide some of the fat. Um, but, uh, my weight has gone down a little bit, but, uh, it's fluctuating. I went off the diet two days ago and I think I'm still paying that off. Um, but overall, although I'm not losing weight very fast, I am losing weight a little bit, uh, slowly, not going to say steadily cause I went off the diet, but I'm, f I feel lighter, right. And I feel thinner. Someone, I read on some forum about the carnivore diet that you should uh, measure your waist before you um, check your weight because sometimes you won't lose weight, but you'll lose waist. So, and I do feel like I have, I feel lighter. So my weight's going down. It's definitely, I'm losing weight on it. It's surprising. It's just grease and fat. It's fat and meat, but oh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and I feel pretty healthy on it, actually. I feel good. I feel, you know. It doesn't feel like I'm just eating oil and fat, fat and meat, rather. Anyway, my sleep. So it's again, it's actually more consistent. It's pretty good. Right before the potato diet, I was having a nightmare with my sleep. I was sleeping for a couple of hours here and there. It was just horrible. Um, I've got through that, so now I'm sleeping five hours consistently. The problem is, I still feel like I'm on a 26 hour day cycle. Like, it just, I, the point when I go to sleep and wake up just seems to get later and later. So I'll go to sleep at midnight and then the next day it'll be one o'clock and the next day, I'm, I'm currently at three o'clock. I go to sleep at three o'clock and I wake up at like eight, 
eight thirty sometimes. Um, and then tonight, probably be four o'clock. And the problem I have is that if I try and force myself to go to sleep earlier, let's say I go to bed at midnight, like I'm going to break this cycle. What happens is I lie there for an hour, not being able to sleep, tossing and turning, and then maybe I'll drop off. But then I wake up 20 minutes later, and now I'm royally screwed because then I'm just up, and I'll be up until 6 or 7 in the morning. I don't know. My, I've never got the hang of sleep. 50 years old, and I still haven't figured out how to sleep. It's ridiculous. Um but I am sleeping well when I sleep, which is good. So that's better than it was, believe it or not. So um, skin condition. I noticed this morning, actually, it's not better. Hasn't helped my skin condition yet. But again, it's only seven days. Uh, a lot of the carnivore diet advocates say that this is a, a multi-month long transition for your body, right? It's not something that happens. Like the potato diet, my skin cleared up after two days, right? Because... There's no oil in my diet, I guess. Well, I now have to go through a much different body transition now. So I still have the um, skin condition. It's not at its worst. Is it really disgusting when I do this? It's not at its worst when I touch my forehead to see the dry flakes. Yes. Um, but it's, um, it's a little better than it was. Uh, physical. I feel great physically, actually. No pains, no aches. Um, my joints that were swollen, that's gone. It was going on the potato diet. It's really gone on the meat diet. I feel physically a lot better than I have in a long time. Um, mentally, creatively. Okay, so two things. Mentally, there's the creative side and the depression side. Depression side, nothing's happened. <laughs> I'm, I really am starting to come to the conclusion that it's got nothing to do with my diet, which is crazy because I've always kind of been relying on that. And it sounds weird, but I've always been hoping it was my diet because then it's a, an imminently, uh, it, it, it's an easily rather fixed issue, right? It's like, well, okay, you're depressed. That's because your diet's bad. There's your solution right there. It's just up to you to take it. Well, I'm taking that solution and it's not a solution. So uh, that's frustrating. Everyone's feeling depressed. There's a lot of depression in the world right now with the pandemic and in the US with the troubles, the troubles, or the troubles we have in the US. Um, yeah, so it's not that. I think it's, mm, I think it's related to my creativity. So my creativity is bad, but I just opened one of my plays today. So I'm just going to try and drive through it and actually get some writing done. The problem is, usually when I can't write, it's because I don't really, um, I don't feel motivated and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to open my day. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I just want to, whatever. And then I open, I get into it and I start writing. My problem is slightly different now. My problem is I have no idea what to write. Like I opened one of my plays, which I was overflowing with ideas about, you know, six months ago. Um, no idea what to do. No idea what to do with it. No no creative force whatsoever. Can't focus on new ideas or old ideas. That's That was one of the notes I made originally, and that's still happening. But I've opened it up again today, and we'll try again. I'm going to try putting on some um, Alpha Waves music, or are they Beta Waves? They're, basically, it's like a white noise music, music for concentration. I used to use it all the time. And if you have problems focusing, it really helps. I don't know if it's going to help now, but it really helps. If not, you can go with certain um, types of music, like Ben Prunty is uh, an electronic composer. He did the soundtrack for FTL, which is my favorite game of all time. And he has a huge library of material. I mean, he's got, I don't know, he's got 15 albums or something, maybe less. But it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, work there. And he's a wonderful, wonderful composer. And it's amazing to write to his work. Because it's clear, clean, and it, it doesn't, it's not too complex. It's fairly straightforward what he does, but it's beautiful melodies. And it just fades into the background and creates an atmosphere for you. Um, also, Tron Legacy. I think I have mentioned that one. But uh, I write to Tron Legacy soundtrack as well, because that's amazing. Daft Punk, funnily enough. Um, I don't know why that's funny. Uh, so, creatively, I'm trying to fix that today. But that's basically my checklist. That's where I'm at. I just thought I'd slip this little bastard in. I didn't weigh myself this morning. Uh, 
I forgot to, <laughs> actually. And then I ate my breakfast and I drank loads of water and uh, I realized I'd forgotten to. So I'm not going to weigh myself now because that would just depress me. Uh, but we're on day seven. I'll weigh myself tomorrow and then I think it's time I put another video up. Um, yeah. Day eight. There we go. Oh, no, no, don't go back up. Don't go back up. All right, not bad. I'm running out of ways to cook meat. Salt, heat, that's it. <laughs> I'm cooking pork at the moment, right? So I had pork sausage um, or, or ground pork this morning that I made into sausages. Here's the thing, on this diet, you're supposed to, like there are levels to the carnivore diet, right? Level one, you're allowed this, level two, three, level three. And the highest level, or the most stringent level, level three, I think it is, um, is uh, beef, salt, and water, and coffee, because this is America. That's it. So, like, my pork, my little, I made some pork patties this morning, would be off my diet. I wouldn't be allowed those. I have cut out the bacon. I have cut out the breakfast sausages that I don't make, because if I make them, I know what's in them. So, but even with those, like, so this morning I put in, uh, in my sausage meat, I put a few red pepper flakes, I put some salt, I put some pepper, and I put a little bit of rubbed sage. Well, I can't have sage on this diet, even though in that small amount, in theory, you know, the, 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 the thought process here is that most plants are poisonous. So... If you go out and, uh, did I say this already on a video? But if you go out and just randomly pick and eat a plant, there's a good chance it will be poisonous. That's not true of meat. There's a good chance it will be fine for you, for most of it. So any th plants that you have in your diet, you're supposed to have none, <laughs> which is really hard for people to get their head around. None at all. No vegetables, nothing. Even if it says it's good for you, no. You don't have any of that. You just have meat. So that makes coming up with new ideas for cooking a little hard but I also read that actually that's something I should try and tackle so that I'm not expecting that and that the food is just the fuel the, fu the food is just the fuel that's all it is you're not supposed to enjoy it you know you can make it not taste like it's going to make you want to vomit but you shouldn't be I should not be obsessed with turning this meat into this delicious meal every time because that's just buying into the fact that I'm going to end up breaking my diet. And to be honest, I have broken my diet several times. I broke, I said on here a couple of days ago. Um, and last night I was really close to breaking it again. And basically we went to bed. <laughs> that's how Laura and I stopped doing something stupid and going out and getting frozen yogurt. We just went to bed, you know. Um, but yeah, like this morning, I'm, I I cooked up the breakfast patties and a couple of eggs. And I'm like, ugh, this is boring. What can I do? But I just got to try and get out of that mentality. And what I'm hoping is that there's like a levels of boredom, all right? And I can just adjust to this level of boredom and then I'll be fine with it. And then I can make it even more boring. I don't know. I don't know. Me. One last thing before I sign off and upload this video. One thing I have noticed about this diet is it's making me very aware of what my triggers are. So what's going on in my conscious when my conscience when I'm when I'm thinking about cheating and I said earlier that I have cheated on this diet. I've only cheated once. It's not like I'm constantly cheating and not saying. I'd be saying on here if I am. What I mean is that in general, when I die, I cheat. That's what breaks it. I know everyone knows that story, but still. But what I'm noticing is that somewhere in my processing of the idea of cheating, there are levels to my cheating. And I know that instinctively inside me. And for me, sugar is a minor cheat. And the reason sugar is a minor cheat is that in general, I'll go out and if I want a candy bar or something like that, I want a Snickers, let's just say. I feel that I will go have that Snickers and then that will be over, right? So sugar is actually not part of my food addiction. I don't think. This might be really naive. Bread is because I don't have bread when I cheat because bread I really want. And I know that if I were to go out 
Like, I love ham sandwiches. Just something as simple as a ham sandwich. If I go out and get a loaf, like, or a, or a roll of bread and come home and make myself a sandwich, I just know I am off my diet at that point. And we're talking days because I hunger for bread constantly. Like, when I'm bored, when I was bored at breakfast this morning, I, what I was thinking about, I wasn't thinking about oatmeal. I wasn't thinking about, I was thinking of bread. I want toast. I want sourdough toast with butter on it. That's what I want. That's what I want to eat. And when I'm craving at lunch and I'm bored, I'm having a burger. Currently, I'm having a burger. Um, what I want is a bun around it. If I'm having bacon and eggs in the morning, I want sourdough toast. If I'm bored at night and I've cooked myself some chicken wings and I'm eating those, I'm like, God, what do I want? I want a ham sandwich, you know, or I, or I want some garlic bread. You know, it's all about bread. So I don't, even when I cheat, I am not, triggering the worst possible cheat that I have in me. I'm not trying to give myself brownie points for crappy achievements here, but I am recognizing the fact that that is a change in me, right? When we go out and got frozen yogurt uh, two days ago, there was part of me that knew that this wasn't the worst cheat I've ever done. The worst cheat would be going to the market and buying a loaf of bread, which is what I really wanted to do, but I didn't do it. Dave's Killer Bread, by the way. It's amazing bread. If you're in the US. Anyway, <laughs> giving you tips on shitty food now. But um, there's part of me that knew I can't do that. I can't take that step. So the frozen yogurt, as bad as it is, I'm going to get over it tomorrow. I'm going to get back on the horse and I'm going to get back into the diet. And I did. If it had been bread, I think I knew, oh, you're, you're off the diet now. You're going to have to make a confession video where you say, I'm done with this diet, you know. And I can't remember now, did that happen with the potato diet? Is that why I ended it? Well, no, I mean, I ended the potato diet because I was just like, fuck this, seven days of potatoes, I'm done. You know, I've done the clean out, I'm done. Let's move on to the real diet. And I think this is the real diet for me right now. At least until I turn my thought process about food into fuel. If I can get there, then I think I'll be able to eat anything I want. Um... You know, we went to a restaurant the other night and uh, we ordered takeout from a restaurant the other night and I just had meat and uh, I just had steak. They had like a chimichurri steak. It was from Urban Plates, if you know that little kind of deli takeout buffet restaurant. Um, and everyone else had a regular meal and there's four of us sitting around and I'm just eating my steak and I was perfectly happy and that felt really good. It felt really good. I was like, I think this is the part of the meal that I would enjoy most anyway. This is actually what I want to eat. All the other stuff, the potatoes around it, or the or the green beans, or the little bit of bread you get, all of that's cool, but actually this is the part of the meal that I would enjoy most, and I get to have this on my diet. And that process was all going in my head, which is healthy, and maybe indicates to me that I'm changing my adjustment, my feelings about food, but I don't know. Feeling confident. All right, let's put this son of a bitch up. <laughs>